still to come. In just a few minutes, we're going to be joined by our friend and colleague, Kate Garraway, after she laid her husband, Derek, to rest on Friday. Kate joins us this morning to speak about Derek and to thank all of you for the outpouring of love and well wishes that you have sent to her. Lovely to see you, Kate. Lovely and to we see will you, Kate. speak to you after the break. Morning to you. Morning. Morning. Right, uh, coming up to 20 past. Back with Kate after this. And to Kate in just a minute. First, though, the rain's here. Morning. 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 Really looking forward to that interview, to mm. seeing Kate. It's really good. And as you said, thanking everybody, which is what she always mm. does. And she's yeah. quite right, too. She's amazing. 24. Now, we've had heavy hearts for some time now here on Good Morning Britain, following the passing of our dear friend Kate Garraway's husband, Derek, after, of course, his extensive battle with complications from COVID. It's been almost two months since Kate last joined us here in the studio, but Thursday this week, she's going to be returning to the desk and into your homes. Mm -hmm. um, and for that reason, she wants to talk to us and to you now. Very good morning to you, Kate. Morning. Yes, morning. Welcome to my home. Uh, we've got Rav here and Mark and Simon, of course, you know very well, and I do. The first thing they said is, should we shoot this that way because it's tidier? And I said, I think it's a bit late for that now. <laughs> let's just, <laughs> let's just uh, own the mess well, and go with it. So here you are, Lego and Chaos All. I was going to say, Kate, to I was going to say, look, what is happening in the background is sort of symbolic of what's been happening because we have flowers and we have Lego, don't we? And presumably cards. Yeah. And also yeah. I know yeah. you have there yes. already the book of condolence, all of the mm. messages from viewers. Have you had a chance it's... yet to have a look through? Uh, well, do you know what? You, you, they arrived with this this morning. I believe, Susanna, you were part of this and it's amazing. So. This is from you with, with uh, beautifully done, thank you, um, messages, I mean, uh, for Derek. And, and it's a strange thing. I've also got, by the way, here, three baskets of messages yes. from cards, from viewers, from crew there. And I'm sure you picked out many of them in here. And it's just amazing. It feels like my emotions are at 110%. The, the unbelievable love um, that we all have, don't we, as a GMB family? And it's, it's just wonderful. And ITV generally. I think we are just very, very lucky that... You're going to make me cry already, so let's try and get a couple of minutes in. But um, the love that we have as a, uh, as a family all together, which is people watching at home, it's you at home... Um, that we're so connected and we've always been connected in all our joys and all our fun and, and the challenges of life um, of which Paul Derrick has faced head on and our family has done as well. But having those messages, I, it makes me weep because I feel so grateful and I'm also aware that there are people this morning yeah. that don't have that sense of love and, and, you know, just want to share with you because I know there'll be people going to funerals today who'll be hearing terrible diagnoses today, mm. who'll be facing the worst today. And um, I'm thinking of them, really, because I know how they feel. Kate, and, I want... uh, and I'm lucky that I've got all of you, you know. Mm. Kate, I want to ask you... A very Sorry, fun... I interrupted you, no, as usual. Well, no, I, interrupt, I interrupted you on, on a live link. <laughs> Kate, I want to ask you a, a, a very fundamental question on behalf of the viewers. It's a question yeah. that has been put to me, yeah. to, to put to you. Almost everywhere I go, people want to talk about you. And, and the question that always finishes off the conversation is, I don't know how she does it. Mm. I don't know how she did it. Um, we've witnessed how you did it at first hand over the last four years, but it still remains a huge question. Yeah. How did you manage to keep it all together all the way through? I mean, under the most phenomenal stresses and strains, Gosh. you turned up here, you did your job, mm -hmm. and then you went back and went back to being a carer and a mother and a wife. It's extraordinary. How did you do it? Uh, well, I'm not sure I did it very well. I think I relied on everybody else, like we all do. I think I've got a massive debt to so many people, and not least Derek, actually. 
because his spirit and fight to keep going never once did he say, I don't want to try, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, nor have the children. The children have been extraordinary throughout. And I think we have rituals like funerals because there is this extraordinary vacuum. So, you know, it, it feels like five years and also two minutes since I was in the studio, excited because Derek had never been in a more positive place than he was when just before um, the cardiac arrest that led to all the events that, that took him from us. And we, he'd had an MRI scan, things were progressing. It was the furthest from the spectre of death that we'd ever been, which is some kind of lesson to us all, I guess, about holding life close. Mm. And um, I remember thinking, gosh, we must do this. We've got a million minutes coming up and all those things that mm. I was thinking about. And then it was one of those stop the clock moments where you want the world to stop. And I think the vacuum you feel at that point, having been entirely focused for four years on what do I need to do next? What can I do for Derek? What's happening with the children? You know, and all of that. It, it swamps you. It swamps you. And I think the thinking, right, we now have what we were told was 24 hours and turned out to be more than a month of him fighting on and fighting mm -hmm. on, even though the prog you know, the prognosis was, well, this is one he won't make through. And that's a challenge, isn't it? Because for the children, when they heard the doctors say he won't survive this, they've heard that so many yeah. times. Um, and he did. So it was a challenge to not make, and when we knew Derek could still hear, even though he couldn't open his eyes or speak, it was a challenge to make sure he knew that he wasn't letting us down because he couldn't get through this last one, you know? And um, they were so beautiful, the children, about that. Individually, they had time with him on their own as well as all of us together. And, and, and Darcy said, Dad, if you can't do this, we'll be OK. You know, you, you, you release yourself if you need to go. Don't worry about us. And I thought that was extraordinarily brave. And I had similar conversations and a chance to hold his hand and smell his skin and, and, and say, you know, we're here all the way through. And some people don't get that, you know? Some people don't have that. And one of the things um, I tried to say very badly at his funeral is that a lot of people, and it's a comfort, isn't it, to think... He's free from pain, and my goodness, he deserves to be. But for Derek, what the medical profession, the carers, the therapists... There was a porter at the funeral who was so moved and said, I want to be here for porters everywhere. Uh, receptionists, what they gave our family and give to families everywhere for those extra nearly four years is extraordinary and Derek wouldn't have traded one day of that nor would we so gosh that's a muddled whole lot of words isn't it no, but um no. I guess what I'm trying to say is thank you to them and thank you to everybody and you know it's sort of a new life starts now um I don't quite know how it's going to be but grief isn't containable is it in a day or a month or a year so I think some people say, why are you going back to work? Well, you know, everybody does have to, don't they? Every Life has to start any minute now. In fact, he's late, actually. Um, <laughs> Bill's going to have to go to school. And, um, uh, in fact, somebody better tell him to hurry up because I'll be in trouble <laughs> with the teachers. But, um, but you know, we, we have to pick ourselves up and go on, don't we? And that's what Derek did and would want me to do. And, you know, thank you to everybody that's made it possible. Um, and there's lots to say about the system, um, which I will say, but for now it's, it's really just an outpouring of love for everybody that supported me that I want to give. Um, Shall I stop talking and let you ask a okay, question? So I want Sorry. to ask... Uh, well, firstly, I want to... You know, the funeral was beautiful. Uh, there were so many very magnificent, poignant moments. 
Uh, it, it, you mm. did him proud on Friday. Yeah. The children were there, obviously. Um, remarkable mm. strength, simply strength in the wake of what has happened mm. for Darcy to do what she did. Of course, she mm. was one of the pallbearers. Um, how are the mm. children... How are Darcy and Billy doing? I mean, that they... was her... Right? Yeah. I mean, that was her. Um, I was talking with my mum and dad. Um, I was really conscious that the funeral should be about Derek and not about ill health. And, you know, he had a big chunk of his life where he was involved in, in the Labour Party and politics, but many, many other chunks of his life that were family that were his time as a psychologist. I mean, there was somebody there that I met for the first time that whose life Derek had saved through therapy. And he came up and said, I've never been allowed to tell you this before because of the rules surrounding therapy. But, but Derek uh, stopped me from killing myself and I'm here today because wow. of him. So I wanted that, um, I wanted the funeral to represent everything about him and not be about me. And Darcy came into the room when we were talking about it and, uh, and said, please, will you let me carry the coffin? And I thought, crikey, that's a practical challenge. Um, anybody who's ever done it, it's a, it's a heavy thing. And she said, I, I want to do it, and basically insisted on doing it. And, uh, and I thought that was a beautiful thing. Incredible. You know, I, I that thought that she, the words that you read on her behalf, uh, because she wrote a beautiful eulogy, yes. which was also very funny at times, some of her memories of, 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 the, yes. of, the, of, of the games that she, that she played with Derek and that you all played together, was, made everybody yeah. laugh. But it also finished with what you, you just alluded to there, her final conversation, as it were, with her father, where, and I thought this was so mm, mature yes. as you read this out, that, that, she, that she basically whispered to him that he could stop worrying about them now. He could stop worrying about taking care yeah. of you all. Um, I thought that Don't was Don't worry about us. So Don't worry about Mum. Yeah. Uh, I will be fine, cos you live on through us. Mm. And, um, you know, it's not what she should have today. Derek was only 56. There, there were three things that stand out for me. Their, their, their grieving will continue and is really, we're in the foothills, aren't we? You know, as anybody who's been through it knows and people on the team, Andy Peters and all of you, everyone's been through it in, in some form. We're in the foothills, we, we know there's a long way to go. But two things struck me when, when I was with Derek and when they said, you know, this has happened and we don't think he's going to last the day. And I thought, right, I have to tell the children and get them close to, to him and me. And I sort of said it very factually and said at the end, have you any questions? And the first thing Darcy said is, how are you, Mum? Mm -hmm. And that took my breath away and I said, gosh, that's a very, very lovely question, Darcy. Um, thank you for asking it because... You know, what an extraordinary thing. And then when he did pass, I was actually on my own with him and came out of the room and, and told the children he had. Um, and I said to them that Dad has actually gone. And uh, Billy said, I'm so sorry, Mum. And I just thought, my goodness, they've really taken on board a caring role, oh, you know, yeah. and I'm so proud of them for so that. So proud of them. I'm so proud of them for that. Um, and yes, and and they did feel that. They did feel that 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 they didn't want to pressure him to keep going mm. for us. I don't think he felt that. I think he he kept going because he wanted to be here. But it's lovely that they saw his perspective in that way. I think it's extraordinary, and um, you know. That that's what we all have to come together and think about. And I think that's what these letters are about. You know, mm. there's so many people sharing their thoughts and feelings to me about people they've lost. And it's very individual and it's very unifying. It's um, a pain that everybody experiences and copes with in a different way. But we all know that it's part of life and love. 
um, that if you're lucky enough to have life and love, mm. then you also have losing, don't you? That's that's the um, that's the bottom line. And Kate, do you know? And, I'm just gonna, uh, the I just, sun comes up. I, what I was going to say was get was Sorry. I no no not at all. But what I wanted to say was that your children have been obviously they've been through this with you. Very often we step in to try and protect children, mm. don't we? From sort of the 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 sad mm. realities of life. I think yeah. that the way that your that Darcy and Billy have dealt with this is probably going to lead to a really mature conversation. I mean, they're so mature and they've mm. done so brilliantly and, and our love is with them, of course, as well as with all of Derek's family. It, it's absolutely remarkable. Yeah. And I think it will lead to a conversation about, you know, perhaps the way that we, the way you've talked to them, they've talked about it. It's a really important conversation mm. to have with children about one of the realities of life. I also wanted to ask you about, of life. about Derek's carers, yeah. because one of his carers, oh, yeah. his key carer, was also there yeah. carrying the coffin, wasn't he? And yes. what I think is you've inspired amongst viewers is knowing about what the reality of caring for someone at home when they are out of hospital, how different that is from when someone is in hospital. I, you know, Richard says, we've all seen what you've been through, but it, as I said to you, it wasn't until you did an interview with the Sunday Times magazine that actually I realised how difficult this has been for you. And I talk to you mm. all the time. And I think, and there are many, many carers <laughs> out there watching now who will think nobody mm. knows the reality of this. You know, luckily through you, we do, but every, thousands of people are going mm. through this every day, aren't they? Absolutely. Jake again said, I want to carry Derek. And I said, Jake, you've carried this family and Derek for long enough. Take that burden off your shoulders. And he said, no, I, I want to see this through to represent carers everywhere, um, professional carers who we call them professional because they're so skilled, but they're doing it absolutely out of a credible spirit of honour and love and goodness. Um, and I guess I represent the sort of um, non-professional <laughs> scrambling carers of which, as we know, you know, Every day, at least 12 people take on caring for a loved one for the first time every single day in this country. And many of those, nearly half, give up work to do it because it's not possible um, to be supported in doing it otherwise. And there is so much that needs to change there. And I, I, I want to take a moment, if I may, to kind of gather my thoughts before talking too much about that, okay. because I, I think it's something that will be my cause forever, because we have so much brilliance in our medical profession but and, and so much skill, but we, we need to have a different system of supporting that. Um, caring and also anything that really happens once you're not in the life and death moment, it, 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 it needs to change and it, and it, it hopefully will change. Um, but I think for people watching, they will know two things, really, that, that are in a caring position. How unbelievably hard it is, but what an honour it is, too, and how much, um, you know, I wish I was caring today. Oh. Because uh, it's a, you know, it's, it's an incredible thing to be that line of defence mm. against the world. And yes. what happens to us all in yeah. life, to to be able to be that person there for somebody, it's the ultimate honour and privilege, yeah. isn't it, really? And I know I didn't get it all right, and I have lots of regrets of things I should have done more of and wish I'd, you know, spent less time fretting about. Um, but it is a huge honour, and what you do will will be something that builds your life forever. It's well, It's a gift, but also you... You get so much from yes. it as well. Well, Kate, I, I can't. Sorry, that's very depressing. No, no, I don't not mean to depress slice. everybody Kate, on a Monday I, morning. I, I you know what I mean? You know. I cannot tell you what a privilege it's been for us to talk <laughs> to you this morning, and I know for the viewers to see you. And you're you're back oh. in studio. You're back at work this week, aren't you? Yes. 
Which day? I am. I'm going to be looking forward to a blow dry. <laughs> I'm going to be finding fake eyelashes. <laughs> I'm going to be very much looking forward to applying fake tan. Don't worry, I will be a little bit more respectable by Thursday. Oh. Uh, I'll be doing a lot of homework between now and then because I feel like I've been in a very small bubble. So I'm going to look forward really to coming into the world and sharing what's going on for okay. everybody else and connecting with everybody again. Uh, so thank you for having me back and have a little bit of patience. I might be a bit rusty. Honey, uh, there's a new there's a new arms. king, isn't there? Have I caught up with that? <laughs> <laughs> now, just before we let you go, have you had any yeah. um, sort of letters, cards from unexpected places, Kate? Well, you know, I have. I've had extraordinary things. I had the most beautiful letter. Um, from David and Victoria Beckham, <laughs> um, handwritten, beautiful, very good handwriting, may I say, very good handwriting. That was Darcy's observation. Um, and also um, from the royal family, Catherine and William um, sent a beautiful letter. And I know Catherine's been in hospital herself, so that was lovely. And, you know, even the king, um, because there is somebody that knows about grief. Mm and also knows about that sort of anticipatory grief where you know something has a risk of happening and will and maybe at one point inevitably happen, but how different it is when it does happen. And I just, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say these things because I think you're sort of sworn to secrecy, but I'm not going into too much detail, but I just think um, it was lovely of them to reach out to me, but it's lovely to know that those people understand those emotions i think for all of us you know what i mean it, mm -hmm. it connects us all together um and it's only because i work for gmb that they know who i am <laughs> but there will be people watching that they don't know who they are but they know the emotions and i think that's lovely yeah Oh, it's just a joy Sorry, to speak to you much, in the depths of there, all is the there sadness. Is there any time left for anybody else on the show? No, but we don't... I mean, honestly, Kate, Sorry. we can... You know, it's just <laughs> lovely talking to you. Look, mm. uh, you know, I... Yeah. We know how we know how hard this is. It's so hard, and and I think one mm. of the, the brilliant things you do, Kate, and you've talked to me about it, is you find the moments of joy. The last four years with Derek have yes. been hard but punctuated yes. with moments of joy, haven't they? Oh, you know, incredibly, incredibly. I mean, Elton John so sweetly sang um, uh, at his funeral the most beautiful song, but what was wonderful is we managed to get Derek to yeah. see Elton John as yeah. a family, with Derek, something exactly. he'd always wanted to do throughout his life. And also so many silly things at home, being here when Bill and Darcy came in from school to laugh and, and all of those silly things. So we've had so many moments of joy and thank you for well, all Kate, of those. Do please give our love to your lovely, lovely children. Yeah. All our love to you. And Derek's mum and dad and, and Derek's sisters. Family, of course. Yeah. And we'll, we yes. will see you bright and early. Thank you. Thursday, Thursday morning. in this chair. Loads of love to you, Kate. Thank All you. It's uh, coming Thank up you. to eight forty-seven. Isn't she something? So I mean, we're just aren't, aren't we inundated. <laughs> aren't we lucky to have it? Yeah, absolutely right. All right, uh, we're going to have to take a break here. You're watching Good Morning Britain. This is ITV One. Yeah, good luck. Hundreds of you have already been in touch with messages of support and love for Kate. Um, I mean, they are streaming in as we speak. So let's just reflect what you feel about seeing Kate's interview. Mo says, watching Kate Garraway's interview, so powerful and emotional. Her strength, determination and resilience after everything she's gone through is inspirational. I have so much love and respect for her. I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't put it better myself. Lauren says, so sad seeing Kate Garraway, brave woman. James, Kate Garraway, a strong, inspirational, loving, beautiful human being. So many of you moved to tears. Karen on X says, oh my, oh my, what a moving interview with Kate. I have tears pouring down my own face in empathy. Such a brave family. Kate is doing such a great job for all carers. Lisa on X as well says, I'm sitting here watching Kate, my own tears streaming. I just want to say that Darcy and Billy are a credit to the upbringing that Kate and Derek have given them. Right. They most certainly are. Yeah. 
um, and, and just representing other people as well. Kate always thinks of others before she thinks of herself, Realm says. Thank you so much for sharing the truths and deep wounds that comes with complex illness and loss. You are an extraordinary human being. Rest easy, Derek. Thank I'm you for your company like this morning. Good morning, Britain. Back tomorrow from six. Now it's time to join the rain. See you tomorrow. Thank you.